Hello, the first step in checking your timing belt or replacing it if you've got more than 50 or 60,000 miles on your engine is to uh, remove the engine cover, remove the upper and lower timing covers, and then remove uh, the three screws that hold on the tensioner for the serpentine belt and then remove the serpentine belt. It's easiest to do the job if you remove the two splash guards. There's this one that's in the front, then there's another one under here, it's an engine splash guard, and uh, it's uh, helpful to take those off. Yeah, there's uh, unfortunately the screws they use to put the splash guard in and out are kind of a star tool or a Torx tool, and uh, you'll probably need to get a special tool to uh, pull it out. I guess a Phillips screwdriver's or a hex head is just uh, was too easy to do. There's two uh, brackets that have to be removed. Then you have to remove this hose, get it out of the way. Then the timing cover comes off after you move it to this side of the hose nozzle. Turn uh, your steering wheel all the way to the right so that the tire is pointed all the way to the right and that creates a space where you can get in to this area. This is the uh, right side splash guard for the engine. You unscrew this nut, which we already did. This comes off and here you can see the crankshaft pulley. The first thing is to move the crankshaft to top dead center. Uh, this is not necessary to change the timing belt, but it is a good safety mechanism in case something goes wrong and either the crankshaft or the camshaft pulley on top of the engine there gets turned uh, for any reason uh, it's easy for you to reset the timing uh, without causing uh, taking the chance of causing any image engine damage the image da the engine damage can be caused if you're rotating the crankshaft or the camshaft pulley in such a way that uh, one of the pistons are at top dead center when the valves are fully opened uh, they'll collide and the bottom of the valves can be damaged that way so uh, it is an easy step to do we'll show you how to do it and uh, recommend you do it every time put a 19 millimeter socket on the camshaft uh, main nut and you turn it by hand the turning will get harder and easier from time to time and you just keep pushing your way through it the question is how far do you keep turning it well you turn it until a notch on this camshaft pulley matches that arrow right there and the notch right now is located right here it's on the front it's got a little bit of white out on it white paint but you can see it's a distinct mark on the crankshaft pulley I mean on the camshaft pulley okay there it is all lined up you can see that that mark here is lined up with the arrow here the lower timing belt cover is like down there somewhere you can see a little piece of it right here and um, the bolts that uh, remove it are 10 millimeters the lower timing cover has to come off and there are three bolts one here one there and one a little higher a little hard to see uh, but it's right right about hang on a second there and then this lower timing belt cover will come off from either the top or the bottom 
we have to remove the serpentine belt, also called a V-rib belt, which is this thing here. It's pretty easy. Take a 15 millimeter open end wrench. You put it on this dat dude here. Pull real hard and slide the belt off. Good enough. Next we have to take off this bolt uh, to remove this nearly nearly purposeless bracket. Then these three bolts that are holding on the tensioner pulley that push the tension on the serpentine belt. Uh, amazingly enough they're all 13 millimeter. We have to take off these four nuts which are six millimeter and they can be taken off either with uh, an allen wrench like this but we're going to use uh, for convenience an air driven uh, six millimeter allen wrench on the end of a, a air tool. We'll start by loosening the tensioner nut which is a 13 millimeter nut. Then push the pulley back that takes the tension off the timing belt. The timing belt uh, can be worked off. This is a brand new timing belt. Look at the teeth. Look at the sides. There's no separation. There's no missing teeth. And there's no roundedness on the ends of the teeth here. Now take a look at our worn timing belt. You can see hopefully uh, how it's pitted here, how it's a little bit separated here where you can see the inner fibers and then the teeth are frayed and worn. Some parts of the timing belt, if we look lower, have got chunks missing or coming out. Once the tensioner has been loosened, it's easy to take the timing belt off. And there it comes off. And notice that we have two problems in terms of getting the timing belt out of the way. We have this structure here which is part of the mount that holds the engine in the engine bay under the hood. It suspends it there. So if you would take this out, the engine in a sense would drop down. And then there's another point down underneath where it's behind the crankshaft pulley. So we have to take that pulley off. I'm just cleaning out the uh, the bay that holds the gear for the timing belt. Now I'm going to run a jack, hydraulic jack, right here with a piece of wood on the top uh, so we don't have metal to metal contact here and do damage. And I'm going to jack it up and uh, to just to support, just as I touch, I'm going to stop jacking to support the weight of the engine right there. If you don't have a jack, hydraulic jack, you can use um, a cinder block with some pieces of wood, adjust it just right. The next step is to remove these two bolts, which is holding up the engine through this engine mount. First thing we have to do, uh, before we can get to these bolts and three other bolts, is we have to remove this power steering fluid reservoir. We start by putting a uh, screwdriver under here and taking this off and then you undo that screw. It's a 10 millimeter. Now we got to take off this nut, this nut, this, this, this. Or at least this, this, and this. And we can slide that out. The sizes are 18 and 18, 16, 16, 13, 13. These are 
hard to break. Very strong. We have three bolts to take out. One here and two down there we can only get from under the car. All three bolts are 16 millimeter. Here's one of the bolts uh, from underneath the car. The other is directly above it about five inches. It can't be seen but it can be felt and taken out. There's enough room. You go to where this uh, hole is that is unused in this vehicle and then when the uh, last third screw is removed from here, which is really hard to do, you move it off to the left, slide it down, and uh, there's a pathway, you just jiggle it around a little bit where it can find its way to the ground. Now you just put the timing belt on. Very easy to do. Put it around the crankshaft, around the tensioner pulley, over the cam shaft, and around the water pump down here. And that is it. Put this uh, camshaft that the indicated gear with the little notch on it lines up with the air over here as I showed you before. Then in case you might have twisted the, the crankshaft we're going to check it over by the transmission. It's, we're going to check it over down here. And if you go down in this area and look very carefully you'll be able to see a square window. I'm going to zoom in on it. My assistant is turning the crankshaft with the uh, 19 millimeter socket. Okay, a little more. A little more. Okay, keep going. You're about halfway there. Okay, stop right there. Good. Piston one is now top dead center. There is the uh, next step. You can see the timing belt is on and the engine mount is back on along with this power steering uh, reservoir. That one bolt right there where my finger is underneath there uh, was a terrible pain in the butt to do. Good. 